sponsored by DCP Player, a simple way to view a DCP on any Windows-based PC. What would you like to leave everybody with in terms of the future of the cinema experience? What would, what's your vision of what that should be? Um, I'll take a first shot at it, and I've, again, I've talked to many of the people in this room about it, uh, you know, over the last uh, two or three years, um, and I think uh, above and beyond what, you know, I think you've heard from each of us in our own way today in terms of the quality of the experience itself, I think the single greatest opportunity uh, for exhibition, and I think it's a blockbuster opportunity, is to actually bring together the ability to see a movie and get a meal. That bringing those two things together into one place, the convenience of that, doing it in a quality way, um, I, I actually think is the next blockbuster thing that cannot be uh, 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 you know, replicated in the home. People, as George was talking, they want to go out, they want to have a social experience. And honestly, if I asked everybody in this room to raise a hand the last time uh, uh, that they went to a, a movie and didn't have uh, a meal, either before or after the movie. It's such a small percentage of our audience. And so I think merging those two things together, which many exhibitors uh, have already uh, started to do and are enjoying huge success with it, um, I think the faster we get there, it's almost, if you think back into the 30s and 40s, what dinner theater was about, you go out, you get a meal, you get a show. And I think that's what we are. We're in show business. And I think that's the big opportunity uh, for all of us together and what is going to uh, continue to grow that business. And as George says, movie theaters are going to be around forever. And here's a way to make them even more in service of our customers and more valuable to our customers. George? Um, well, I'll just pretty much say the same thing, which is to use, again, the the uh, food analogy, the restaurant analogy, which is I think the business is going to drift more uh, into something like a restaurant. What is, you know, if you've got a restaurant, you want to have a very, very successful restaurant. One thing you do have to do is have a great chef. Well, we're the great chefs. And you can have us whenever you want. But the next thing you do is it's the, the, uh, the environment, the dining experience, and the service. These are things that then become very important. And it's just to switch it a little bit and take some of the emphasis off the chef and put a little bit more of the emphasis on the, the service and the environment and the customer and to say, what are, what are they really want? What can we do to make them happier and make the experience even better for them? And uh, I think that's the big challenge for the future. You know, I think, I think uh, George and Jeffrey have been really, you know, eloquent about the, the, the social experience, the experience of going to, to the theaters. And, you know, certainly that's, that was, um, uh, you know, the whole idea that, that there's a sacredness to the theatrical experience, uh, uh, speaking as a, as a filmmaker, was what drove me toward 3D in the first place. You know, I mean, I, I saw it, I liked it, I think I had the same response as Jeffrey when he had seen something, he, he made an instinctive decision and went straight after it. I did the same thing uh, uh, 11 years ago uh, when I saw a digital 3D. We put two cameras side by side on a plate, two HD cameras, and we got two, two uh, digital projectors and we, we put out a live picture on the screen and as we moved the camera around we said, that's like reality. This is incredible, this is way beyond movies. And I never, I never shot film again. After that point, I saw something that I knew could profoundly change the, the theatrical uh, experience. I, I wanted that. I was excited by that. And it was a 10-year journey, really, to get, uh, you know, to, or almost, you know, Avatar came out in 09, late 09. So, you know, it was a 10-year journey of, of, of working on the technology and proselytizing and so on. But the, but the driver for that was my belief that the theatrical, as much as there's always going to be the social component to it, we can take a hit as a business. And we see those hits come uh, periodically, whether it was, you know, from, from uh, uh, you know, video cassette, VHF, VHS, and then it was one thing after another after another. I mean, it started with television. And we've always rebounded, but we've rebounded with a greater sense of pride and way in our own ability to, to put on a, a great show. 
Avatar was, you know, kind of lauded as this big money-making movie and the highest grossing film and all that, but it also was one of the most pirated films, if not the most pirated film in history. How did we, we, we make our money uh, at, at the theaters? Because there was this almost cult-like culture that grew up around that movie that you had to see at the movie theater. And if you weren't seeing it in a movie theater, you weren't part of the conversation. If you saw it in some crappy download that somebody had shot with a, a camcorder in a, in a movie theater someplace, it didn't count. You weren't part of the conversation. It was the peer-to-peer -peer social acceptance, social enabling, and social ostracism that, that was gating that experience, and people had to go see it in movie theaters. And right up to the point where where we basically lost our theaters to, to, to other uh, other movies, um, you know, we were selling out at the IMAX screens. We were we had shifted from initially, I think we were sort of uh, 55 or 60 percent of our revenue was coming from 3D. By the end, I think we were in the high 80 percent coming from 3D. So there was there was definitely this sense that you had to have the theatrical experience. So Avatar wasn't getting significantly cannibalized by, by the other platforms. And I think that's the, that's the clue to this. So what does that mean going forward? We have to continue to try to give the very best presentation. So the things that I would, that I would focus on would be light levels, especially for, for 3D. In fact, you know, 3D is being held back, I think, somewhat by light levels right now. I think the motion artifacts that are inherent in the 24 frame projection system, is it, it's easy, it's low hanging fruit, it's not gonna cost us money for us to, to project and, and author films at a, at a higher frame rate, and all that will go away. So all the negatives that people are saying about, about the 3D experience in theaters, oh, it made me sick, it made me dizzy, all that stuff is coming from this strobing from 24 frames, and, and there's the darkness, the darkness factor. I think higher resolution, higher spatial resolution, 4K, you know, I mean, I think that, sh that should absolutely be a player. I mean, what, what filmmaker wouldn't want to see 4K projection? Uh, I just think we've got to get our priorities straight, that, that the motion artifacts are more important than the spatial resolution. I could do hours on that, and I won't right now, because we're supposed to be wrapping up, but we're doing a thing tomorrow morning where we're going to talk about all those issues for anybody that wants to geek out for an hour and uh, see what the what the next wave in cinema is going to look like. That's we're doing it. I just want to say one little thing, which is uh, my testament to the theatrical experience is that you know I'm obviously bringing out Star Wars for the third time. Time Magazine has he no shame? What are they doing? Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, this is our third generation, a real generation. We have third generation now of kids who are under 12 years old who have never seen Star Wars on the big screen. And I am betting a lot that people will go see a movie that they have seen on television a million times, that they have the video at home, and they will go and see it because they want to see it in a theater, in a social experience. And that's what the real is all about. Jim Cameron, George Lucas, Jeffrey Katzenberg, thank you very much.